decade or so, various publications have ranked the state of Maine pretty highly for an eerie phenomenon, UFO sightings. But the state's history with unknown flying objects goes back much farther. One famous case is the Allagash abduction. On an August night in 1976, Chuck Rack and his friends saw what they believe is a UFO. Rack also is an artist who turned the experience into paintings. He and three friends had been fishing on Eagle Lake. They built a large bonfire in the evening when the craft approached. Rack says he signaled the vessel with his flashlight and several of the friends say they were abducted. In November of 1994, people in the Newport area reported seeing unexplained lights. Two people with no prior relationship described seeing the same thing, a flying vessel which had red, green, and white lights that flashed. And for the last 70 years or so, people across the country have been making a concerted effort to collect more information about UFO sightings. And now much of that information is finding a new home. Reporter Griffin Rushton visited the National UFO Historical Record Center in New Mexico how you interpret what a UFO is. You know, is it misidentification of something prosaic? Is it alien? Is it something else? It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's history. And UFO record archivist David Marler believes that history belongs to everyone. Whether you relegate UFOs to fact fiction or folklore, it's part of our history, it's part of our culture. And I feel that regardless of belief or non-belief in the subject, we need to preserve this element of our culture. Marler built an addition onto his Rio Rancho home to house the thousands of documents he's collected over the years. Everything from declassified Project Blue Book files to newspaper clippings and even air traffic control radio recordings. It's right out of, it's right out of uh, the X Files. I mean, it's a, it's a definite UFO or something like that. Are all packed inside this small room. It is essentially a traditional historical archive, albeit dedicated to a non traditional subject. And his collection, officially known as the National UFO Historical Records Center, is growing. Marler says more and more archivists are sending him their collection so everything is under one roof. It's bringing these puzzle pieces together to get a better picture of what we're dealing with with regard to the UFO subject. We visited his archive back in 2022 and saw documents detailing a UFO sighting near Socorro in 1964. Marler said there was a similar incident near Española, but at the time, he didn't have many documents backing it up. Now he does. And not only are they photos of the landing site, lo photos of the landing site and sketches provided by the New Mexico State Police. Contrary to the Air Force conclusion, they provided no indication that this witness was drunk. They deemed him credible and they provided all of this additional information, which we never had access to until just recently. Marler says there's countless connections hiding in his archive, and he's partnering with Rio Rancho Public Schools to let other researchers and everyday people take a look. They have some open space that they would like to allocate for us to house this incredible treasure trove of history. Marler says he will start moving his collection into two portable classrooms in the Rio Rancho School District later this year. And while it will be open to the public, he says you'll have to make an appointment. Who knows what the average person might discover? What discoveries are waiting for us in these case files that we have yet to connect the dots? Quite the puzzle to mm. put together there. Griffin Rushton reporting. So.